Okay, I'm going to remind you how to add and subtract fractions. This lesson is a refresher course. So most of you, I'm gonna keep it short, most of you with me just reminding you how to do this will be able to remember how to do this. However, if you're feeling lost, there are the lessons I gave to you in sixth grade that are much more thorough. And feel free to go back to those if you need a longer explanation. Those are there for you if you need it. And those would be lessons 25 through 35. And those lessons start from how do you do the lowest common multiple so that you can do lowest common denominator, um, adding fractions, subtracting fractions, adding mixed numbers, subtracting mixed numbers. Feel free to go to any of those pieces that you feel that you are not understanding well. Also, you can see me in the classroom and I can explain those too, but those are available to you, so that if you wanted to do it through the video, you could. And in those previous lessons, I told you there were four steps involved, but really, at this stage, you can probably knock those down to three steps involved in adding or subtracting your fractions. First, get a common denominator. If it doesn't already have a common denominator, get one. Remember, that denominator is the bottom number of your fraction. In order to add or subtract, as you noticed when we were doing the activity earlier, in order to add or subtract those fractions, those denominators need to be the same. Your fraction needs to be cut into equal amount of pieces. You can't cut a ham you can't compare a hamburger cut into large pieces compared with a hamburger cut into small pieces and just go and add numerators up. You've got to get a common denominator. You've got to cut it up the same way. So we'll review how to do that. It's, with practice, it gets fast. After you've done that, you add or subtract the numerators. And then finally, if it's an improper fraction, we convert it to a mixed number. And if it can be reduced, we reduce it. So these are really the only three steps that need to happen. So you may want to copy those down and have those handy for you. Maybe even write it on your desktop so it's there as well. At this stage, I know that you can add or subtract fractions that have a similar denominator already. So I'm skipping that review. Again, it's in this lesson if you want to see that. But in this case, I'm going straight to an example that has different denominators. This has a three and this has a six. I cannot add these together until I have cut these the same way. So if there's a review for that, in order to get the common denominator, we can just multiply this times that. We can do that. But sometimes you're going to have real high numbers and it might get big. So instead, what we might want to do is find the lowest common denominator, the lowest common multiple. So I'll take three and six, and I'll put it on our ladder, and find a number that divides evenly into both of them. I know that three goes into both of them. Once there, twice there. Multiply my L because I'm stuck right here. Three times one is three, times two is six. So the lowest common denominator is going to be a six. Now I can't just magically say, oh, I'm changing you to a six, bring, ta-da. I have to do whatever I do to this, I have to do to this. I have to keep them equivalent fractions. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So in order to get three to become a six, I did times two. And if I did that there, I must do that to his best friend. Remember, beat up the best friend. I did not have to do anything to this six to make him become a six or just multiply him by one, so same to the top. Now that my denominators are the same, add them together, not the denominators, sorry. You don't add the denominators together. Make sure that's clear. Now they're cut into the same amount of pieces. Now you just add your numerators, which is this step. Three plus one is four. Convert if you need to, but this is a proper fraction already. Small, big, so I'm fine. Uh, but it can be reduced. Two divides into both of these numbers. Keep it equivalent fraction by doing the same to the top that you do to the bottom. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. And there's your answer. So there's a quick review. I'll give you one more example, but this is the quick review on how to add subtract fractions. Okay, using the same steps again, get a common denominator. I, this is eight and this is 12. That's not the same, that's not common. I need them to be the same, but I really want them to be the lowest number so I don't have to do all kinds of reducing later. So I'll use 
my ladder for LCM, put 8 on the line and 12 on the line. A number that goes into both of them, hmm, 4. I see 4 going into them. 4 into 8 twice, 4 into 12 three times. That's it. Multiply them. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Some of you might be getting to the point where you kind of see, even by just looking at these, going, oh, the closest, the lowest number they'll both land on is 24. You may start noticing that. That's normal. All right, then I have to ask myself, what did I do to the 8 in order to get him to 24? Well, I multiplied him by 3. And if I did that to him, I need to keep my fraction equivalent, so I must do the same to the top. 5 times 3 is 15. What did I do to 12 in order to get him to become a 24? I multiplied him by 2, and I need to keep it equivalent, so beat up his best friend 2. 3 times 2 is 6. My denominator stays the same. 15 subtract 6 is 9. I convert if I need to. This is proper already. I don't need to convert. Reduce if I can. I think I can because I think 3 goes into both of these. 3 does go into both of these. So divide by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. So your answer would be 3 eighths. So some of you dusting off those cobwebs for this, this whole process, this whole slide was enough. And so that's great, go on to the challenge activity. But for some of you, this may not have been enough. Check these out, choose which one you need, which part are you not sure on, go into those and watch whatever parts you need to so that it makes more sense. Those are there for you, so be sure to use them. They're much more detailed than this review was. Once you're ready, go get that challenge activity and let's see how you do. Good luck.